Hello, good evening, and welcome to PM Express. My name is Nana Ansakwao. And today we are asking, who owns the land? Yes, that one subject that brings so much controversy and litigation. Now, in Ghana, land ownership can be categorized in, uh, well, the dream of every Ghanaian is to live in their own house. Some purchase and others prefer to build. Uh, land in Ghana is rather a sensitive subject and tempers often boil when one faction or the other claim ownership of a parcel of land marked by the other. Now in Ghana, land ownership can be categorized in two broad classes, customary land and public land. Customary land are land owned by the stews, skinned uh, families or clan usually held in trust by the chief, head of family clan or fetish priest for the benefit of the members of that group. Private ownership land can be acquired by way of a grant, sale, gift or marriage. Now, some populists have resorted to self-help by procuring the services of illegal private security uh, known as land guards. Land guards have gained a terrible reputation for brutalizing anyone who trespasses on the land they have been charged to protect and have even killed to that aim. They often... They often there without the knowledge of the legitimate owner of the land, making it making itself virtually impossible. Now we're going to play a little insert uh, and then we'll go on. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest and then we'll take it from there. The land guards allegedly entered the community sometime last year following a legal battle over ownership of the land. The community's leaders had filed a suit against one Saliki, also known as Ayi Awala, the leader of the land guards who had laid claim to the land. But Secretary to the Sabades too, Ajete Benjamin, explains the court ruled in their favor. They claim they have judgment they obtained in 2003. But when you study the judgment very well, the judgment will tell you that the, it may, page 3, paragraph 2 of that judgment, mention the villages that are under the cell land that is disputed for. And even according to Ayukuo 2 and uh, Obrepon Nikojo Abebio the fifth, that judgment is obtained by fraud. And when you study a suit, an action that has been suited against them, there, it has outlined 24 different uh, particulars of fraud in that judgment. They've sent us to court. Some are criminal, some are civil. They've lost all those cases. This Yakubu, the Salichi, who stays at opposite the Swoton Trotter station. He was even a plaintiff to one of the suits. He lost it. But the ruling has not prevented Saliki's followers from harassing and threatening the residents of the community. Their activities are said to have led to some children abandoning school and threatening the livelihoods of families there as they are often indoors for fear of being attacked by the land guards. Bafe ochi enyone le amen gba wona ni ehi wo hekweku ekuya ehi wo ngomi ya ehi wo ngame jela ya ka wo bi te school no keke land guards e bon tu chuamo e school mi keke gbeke bi e fe e jofu e ka wo ngame ya ama ko mo si ni keke ama tutu ame mo mi ame keke o si mo mi wo ba gbebo wo hien le etu obe ni wo hien chumi ni ehi wo poje this year however the land guards are said to have intensified their activities in the area. In fact, these people, they don't allow us to sleep. As already been told, gunshots and other things, marketing people's land. They be threatening people, shooting guns, the way they even ride their motorbike alone. They come face with the sun that they will come and park and look at people's houses. When they know that you are not, in, you don't support them, they will just, tag, they will just come and uh, point you. The residents are particularly worried about their farms, which have now been overtaken by land guards. Meanwhile, officials of the police headquarters say they have dispatched a team to the area to investigate the situation. Abonya at this time of the season, on any other day, according to the people, will be very busy with the mango business. People come from neighboring towns and villages and from the central business district to transact business. But this is that community today. Almost a ghost town. 
The alleged land guards destroyed properties and physically assaulted children and some women using machetes and guns. Solomon Soji, who was physically assaulted, told Joy News he is constantly living in fear, but the arrival of the news team gave him hope. The, the first, I don't feel comfortable walking around, but now no, I feel comfortable. Tay Matthew, who also suffered cutlass wounds, shed tears when he tried engaging the news team in a conversation. Recounting his ordeal was a challenge. I'm not feeling happy because how they did to us, I'm not feeling happy. And we just came here and come and cook and go back. What is going on? We, we can't predict it. And so we want them to come and help us. The chief of the Abonya abandoned the village to save his life. He alleged the attackers returned later with a group of policemen to scare them off the land. He said they captured the name and number of one of the officers that came with the attackers the second time. Police for Abuna, dear police for Jamie, see Langa, I met on Langas. Police for Amateur Langas. Now, my bar, one number could make number. I told them, Mr. MK is here. MK is here. I'm a coming just what units. Near number G four one one nine two. Mr. Nilol in America by G. DP, the Monisan Patro, DP, twenty six thirty one. Dilol in America bar. Oh, a can no one. Oh, I'm quite a minute for any a Kahi Aomi. Nika police fuel and a jam, and best I stop on me. Name any dual wall at home. I quite a Kahi Omina stop on me. This woman who says she almost died at gunpoint because she refused to give up the husband who the attackers were after. The few people that the news team met, we were told come in the morning to change their clothes and prepare food, then flee Abonya to other neighboring villages for fear of losing their lives. Even though there is security presence, the safety of the people is still not assured. Efforts to reach the divisional commander to clarify the allegations were unsuccessful. Well, that was one hell of a report there. And uh, with me in the studio to discuss land issues and myself, because there's no land issues that goes and come without a chief being in there somewhere or being the original, uh, you know, guy who sold the land. And so today, my I think all three of us are very, you know, rightfully should be in this studio to discuss this matter. I'll start from my extreme left, and it's Charles Lewinga Pozwing, who is a legal practitioner. Yeah, yeah. Did I say the name right? Pozwing. Yeah. Pozwing, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I have to my immediate left, uh, Kofi Yosin Ejay, who's an honorary secretary to a Ghana Institution of Surveyors. Yes. And then there's myself, the chief. <laughs> Can you imagine? Talking about land. <laughs> Charles, I'll start with you. How do I know I own a piece of land? I mean, that. There's no argument, there's no qualms about it. Whether I like it or not, I own this piece of land. How, how do I do that? No, no basically it depends on which angle from which you stand, whether as an individual or a family or a community. Okay, let's start with an individual. Just an individual, I want to buy 100 by 100 and just put my house on it and retire happily. How do I know that that 100 by 100 is mine? The reasons for many difficulties, I think, has always been the fact that a lot of people go to acquire land without engaging the services of those who have trained or who have been trained to, to carry out those activities. And the first and foremost one is that if you want to acquire land, the first person you need to engage is the services of a lawyer. Because land has its own history and how people became owners of the land. And what what kind of person can sell a piece of land to you? We all belong to communities. Mm -hmm. Lands are classified as family lands, as you said, skin lands, mm -hmm. two lands. But the law recognizes some particular persons who can sell a family land or a stool land. And therefore, the basic thing an individual who intends to acquire land should do, I think the first thing is to, uh, to, 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 to get involved by a use of law a lawyer, not to work to a site, get either a caretaker or some land guards who are always on the land and they describe that we are the owners of the land or we are the caretakers of the land we can sell. Invariably, you end up paying money which may not be sufficient for the acquisition. 
and you end up buying litigation or end up losing your life. So I think basically the first person you should encounter when you are is a lawyer. Then from there, you can always go to my, my, my good friend on my rights area, which is making sure that you are buying a particular piece of land, the exact land, which is the work of those who do survey work. So basically, the first fellow you need to ascertain the ownership from will be a lawyer. And then the second person you need to see, maybe through your lawyer, will be the surveyor who ascertains a particular piece of land. Mr. Surveyor. Yes. Um, as you rightly said, land is a very complicated commodity. I mean, unlike chattels that we can hold and move around. You can buy a mobile phone. I can keep the phone of uh, Charles in my pocket, even in this studio, and he will never know unless I bring it out. But because of the fixed and complicated nature of land, you don't buy it just like any other commodity. You need to do the proper investigation to ensure that the person that you are buying the land from is the actual owner. So those are the legal parts of the, of the job. Like you rightly say, you see a lawyer. Either a lawyer or a person that is engaged in land management issues like an estate surveyor. Some these days, estate surveyors are even getting interested in law. You have lawyers, estate surveyors that are also going to read law. Now, to say you own this land, it means that you've done all those checks that ensured that the land is safe from any other encumbrance that may lead to any litigation. And then you have properly what registered that land. But sometimes, even in the course of the investigation, there are certain technicalities that can sway you. A lawyer can take a document, do all the investigation that it takes, confirm that, no, this land is for Charles. But Charles can own a piece of land here and then take me 300 meters away and show me another parcel of land for which the document that he's holding. That's not covered. Yes, can say that, no, if, I, if you do the search on it, you show that it's for me. But we are standing at different locations. That is why he said that, Apart from the legal investigation to make sure this man owns it and that, you need to also do the technical aspects of it. Sometimes even it, the land can belong to me all right. Searches don't even end at the Lands Commission. You can own land, but because it's a big piece of land, the particular area that you took me is a road, or it's been earmarked for a church, or it's a waterway. So apart from even checking at the Lands Commission, we need to do other checks at the town and country planning to ensure that in terms of planning regime, that land that I want to put a residential building on is appropriate for that use. So investigation is very, very, very critical. And sometimes people think that it is expensive. It is more expensive to not to do the investigation and encounter land guards or other people. And that can be very deadly. You lose more than if you had done the right thing in the first place. Charles, you know, you know you've know, you said it beautifully, but every day we turn on our news, the newspaper, you know, now whole communities are even running. First, it used to be just one pot of land and then the watchman runs away because land guard came. But now they're getting that aggressive where whole communities are now running away. So then you go back to say that, have, did the community not see a lawyer to make sure if they were supposed to live there or, you know, why, why, why can't we solve this land issue once and for all? Because, I mean, we've lived on the land ever since God created us up until now. There must have been some modalities to say that every piece of land belongs to somebody. I mean, every piece of land must belong to one person and, and never two people. So... Why, why all these confrontations? The, the, the basic the reason is that because land has become, and has always been anyway, land has become a very essential commodity, and everybody seeks to expand their authority over pieces of land where they think that they are lying fallow. But as I, we've always learned that there's no ownerless land, which means that every land has an owner. The difficulty is that the extent of the boundaries and whether boundaries owners are willing to agree that in terms of our ways of having acquired the land, whether by acquisition, by settlement, by hunting or farming activities when the lands were fallow, whether we had very clear demarcated boundaries. 
Unfortunately, no. And therefore, because um, a lot of people now have a livelihood in land, which is that they typically only sell lands for a livelihood, which the revenue is used to service virtually everything in their lives, they are willing to fight to gain more territory. When in fact, in some cases, they indeed know that this boundary is between me and the other person. So what it becomes is that the stronger you are, the more you are able to acquire more lands, which is, should not be the case. The other reason is that because our land registration systems have in the past run into various difficulties where indeed you can even conduct a search where a piece of land belongs to somebody else. But in reality, some other person is in occupation, which means that you can sit in your house and somebody has a registered document to your house. The reason being that Registration in terms of the law now is just notice to the whole world, but we look at occupation as the basis of establishing that somebody indeed is the owner of the land. And therefore, it's very critical that we must self solve this land guard situation or land situations holistically where governments must get involved, which means that regulations must be put in place where a certain degree of determination must be made. That's why we have these two land boundaries where, where tools have difficulties. You can go and the boundaries will be settled. And when these are done, pronouncements are made. As you rightly listen to the tape where the young man alleged that there was a case of fraud in a judgment that was obtained, these have become issues where when people have lost cases in terms of land litigation, they try as much as possible to couch the litigation in a different court or maybe another high court alleging these kind of allegations which can overturn a judgment so, so sometimes it's, they drag on for years yes it's because of our adversarial system of litigation which is that one the judges sit as referees and therefore each party must coin out your case and must prove your case but we have certain rules which say that you must as much as possible give an opportunity to every party to be heard feeling which whatever judgment you arrive at, they will say it's against the rules of natural justice. And therefore, the judges sometimes are willing to work. The parties are either not willing, because the more the litigation goes on, the stronger parties are able to sell. People are able to put up structures and live in them. So they are willing to go through the litigation, or lawyers ourselves get engaged in those games where the lawyer decides that because the judge has fixed a case to be started, the man will decide, I'm not going to appear today. And then you'll be put to another group of cases because of our case, ma case management system where judges have been told, try and finish a certain number of cases to, to enable you to start new cases so that we don't have too many cases which we call parted, which have been heard and nothing is going on. So for purposes of... Uh, an expeditious nature, they are regulated. So lawyers take advantage, parties take advantage. When they are slated to be heard, the other says, I'm not well, I'm traveled out of the jurisdiction. And the rule is that the man has given a reasonable excuse. You must wait for him to make himself available so that it is due that everybody's head. So I believe that um, we, 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 we will have to look at it holistically as a society. We'll come back to, you know, punishment of people who flow. But let me go to uh, Kofi. Surveyors, I mean, why don't you survey every piece of land and then make sure that whether, you know, you come to my town, Zeloke, Dumasa, this is supposed to be a road, this is supposed to be a market, this is supposed to be there, and then the chief has it, and then sells off that plan that you're giving them. Because some of us are not that knowledgeable, and sometimes they sell the whole piece of land to the point where I say, you move your wall and I move my wall so that we have a road. You know, you move that tree and you move this or so have that. You know, so why don't you demarcate every piece of land and say, look, this is it. This is the only, this is, you know, you go 10 plots here, you go 20 plots here. This is a school, this is the, you know, so that we can work from it. Okay, we, surveyors are first and foremost professionals and they need to offer their service where either they are engaged or there is a government policy program where they fit in naturally. <coughs> if you look at Accra, we have most lands that had already been planned. 
where the Lands Commission even have those plans in their records to show the town and country planning. Some areas are not planned. So what happens is that the chief or the family heads have a field day cutting land and selling it anyhow. But we've gotten to that point where our customary holders should face the fact that we are in the modern system of things. If you look at even Accra... It's okay, I won't find you. Be blunt. I won't, I won't find you. <laughs> I, I need to say it the way it is. Yeah, because say, uh, I won't find diplomacy you. has, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> resulted in so many mm -hmm. of, of these things. If you look at a few family holdings in Accra, for instance, Bawi, for instance, they have a very well-organized customary secretariat where they have planned the area. They sell the land in a manner that makes them ensure that this plot number four had been sold already so that it cannot be sold again. Mm -hmm. Now, our chief don't engage in this professional practice. In fact, Chief Tansi, whether family or stool, in the past had been a very respectable you know, institution. But this lazity and, 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 and the fact that money has become the main issue where they do things anyhow, is really having a, a, a toll on us. For instance, most of the difficulties that we have with the land sometimes don't come even directly from the chief. The chief sits in his palace. He's not aware that that land there had been sold. We have people on the ground whom they call surveyors. Sometimes they are not even the qualified ones. So they are the people that cause all the problems that we see. Because having sold one plot of land, Ni has signed. Ni will never go to the field because as a chief, he has no business going to the field. He has his men on the ground. So they keep selling land that has been sold already. Land is big business. And if our chiefs will decide to be business-like, then they should get the services of surveyors. You can't out of your way go and say that I'm going to survey this uh, chief's land for him. They have to engage us. I know we also have to be proactive and sometimes get to talk to them to do the right thing. So not until they organize themselves properly. For chiefs that have organized themselves, well, if you take the Asante and a few you know, prime areas, those problems are not there because they have done it in a well-organized manner and they have decided to respect their custom. If you, if you, I, I tried it. Right? And your fees are not, you know, uh, they are proper fees, you know. And uh, for a little town, you know, the administration didn't have that much money to survey but we need a piece of land surveyed so that we know where our roads will be and everything will be and being you know in the institution has the state got any facilities that i can go and say look you need to help me because i need to demarcate this piece of land before i ruin it or it's well, up the, to us the, the surveyors had been very reasonable with land owners land itself is cash just that it's not liquid so if people will engage surveyors and negotiate with i've seen cases where People had surveyed lands, and they were not given a password. But they traded the land. I have 10,000 acres you want to survey. The land is so much per acre. So you survey, and let me give you. I can't give you the cash, so I'm giving you in like a manner. So those things can be done. But what happens is that the chiefs themselves, sometimes you can even sell part. You see, it's not like they don't have the money. In most cases, it's not true. I have, I have 200 acres. Why don't you sell 50? Use the money for the 50 to sort out survey for the rest. It is not done. Now, some of the courses too are from the courts. You go to court, a ruling is done. Some people even go to court without a side plan. Judgment is given like the uh, gentleman said on the footage. Judgment is given, and that judgment is not confined to a, a, a specific area. So the people go and say that oh, we have judgment for this land. And then they go beyond the, 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 the parameters of the land for which they took the, the, the matter to court. So for me, the matter is not the money issue. And even where it is expensive, do we want to equate money to lives and property when the, 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 the things like that happen? A community that engages in the production of mango or something, you got all of them deserting. So, so the economic effect of this far at ways what we should pay for. Because the chiefs and the family heads, they are not poor. <laughs> if you have 300 acres of land in my village, you are not poor. Just that you need to negotiate well and get the surveyor to come in and do the job. 
We're going to take a break and then when we come back, we're still talking lands. You know, in other jurisdictions, you can literally take a catapult, throw it. Wherever that stone lands, for a small fee, within two days, they will tell you who owns that land. Is it so difficult? We're coming back. Welcome back. We were trying to get DCOP John Kudalo to at least speak on uh, the rife and rampant activities of the Langards, but we're still trying as soon as we get hold of him. I'm sure he will join the show and explain to us uh, what's going on and calm our nerves down. But I asked, if you go to the United Kingdom, you can take a catapult, put a missile in it and fire it for about under five pounds in two days you get an email or a letter telling you who owns that land. The whole United Kingdom. And so I'm asking Charles, why can't I take a catapult, fire it at Osu, fire it at the Dumasa where I come from, come and pay you 10 Ghana CDs in two days, come back and say, oh yes, uh, your missile landed on Kofi's land or it landed on Nana's land. Why can't we do that? Basically, we can't do that because of our own customary law practices and um, our customary law practices in, even in this small Ghana we have differs from northern Ghana through to the, the middle part of the country as well as the coastal areas so because of that various ownership arises and as uh, and if you take some where like in Accra where various lands are said to be owned by families. Even under those families, other offshoots come up because of the nature of the, 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 the amount of money involved in selling these lands. So you can take one family that says, I come from La or Tishi. And another same family, they've been broken into quarters. So then groups of persons say, we own the land from the quarter, not the entire family owns the land. So beyond that then, even headships, which is who is the family head, becomes an issue. So virtually, families are litigating over who is to become head of family. Individuals are holding themselves out as head of families. So the same piece of land could be sold by three different quarters of a particular family. When in principle, it's possible that the same family owns the land save that you are buying it from four different groups of people. So in this case, who then has the title? Or is that land registered or is it just there because our grandfather said it's us and so we are living by those premises? You see, it's, 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 you see our registration processes until sometime in the 80s where the land title registration uh, law was passed to, to create some registration districts where you, you went through a thorough process to have your land title registered. Online Lands Commission, once you present a document with a side plan signed by a certain individual, it is processed and registered. Because the land registration department is not their duty to ascertain whether the fellow who is selling the land to you is the owner. That is not their duty. So who comes first? Yes. Yeah. So then the question is that you, the person doing or attempting to buy land, must ensure that indeed you are buying the land from the right person. As I said, you need people who have gone to school specifically to do land business. Either you have gone to school as a lawyer to learn land law, you are a quantity, you are a surveyor, you are somebody who is, is done land economy, all those land related issues. Then all these difficulties, you are able to resolve these difficulties. So you go to places where they say it's two land. When it's a stool land, there are some persons that are assigned to make it effective. When it's family land, it's the same. When it's an individual land, it's the same. What happens is that because we are not thorough, you go, somebody points a piece of land to you, and then you don't do much investigations because you are in a hurry to buy the land. He says the land is mine. Maybe he gives you papers, and you go and find, do a search, and indeed it's his name. As my friend said, it's likely that even the land it is in the land is in Wa, when in fact you are in Accra. So these are issues that we need to go through. Then, whilst you are on the land, somebody else appears and says that this is my land. I also bought it from this group of person. 
then it becomes an argument. So it means that one family claims a land, another family claims a land. All of you have done searches which are in different family names. So it, it tells you one thing that indeed that piece of land, you are all fighting over a different piece of land, save that you were shown a particular land which you had an interest in, and therefore you were convinced that parts with money. You see, but, uh, Kofi, what I realize is instances where it is the same piece of land that's been sold, you find out that the chief who sold it, and whoever it's at land who you know gives out the you know, the papers to make it legit, they always get away free, and it's always the guy who bought it that ends up in trouble. Sometimes with the way we handle our disputes in this country, because if you go and buy this piece of land, okay, and then you are there, and another person comes in and say it is for him, it calls for cooperation. The two of you are in the same problem. But what happens is that we leave the third party, the person that caused the problem, like you rightly said, the same Nana has sold land to Charles. He has sold it to me. Me and Charles will have to come together and go after our common enemy. But if you look at litigation as it comes to our cause and the rest, you see that the two people that went to the land rather go to court, waste their time, whilst the, pe the gra common grantor of the two have a, a full day. You understand me? This land guard issues, which we, when we were watching the footage, it is a court case that went to court. One party won, the other party lost. Land guards came to the place. Those land guards are not there because they are landowners. They are representing the parties who went to court. So for me, sometimes when these things happen, and you say you are going looking for land guards, it's good. But for the police, they need to find the culprit. The parties in the suit must be called to order. If there should be any arrest at all for me, if you ask me, I'm not a security man. The parties that went to the court are those who should be arrested because land guards, like I'm saying, they are tradesmen. They work for people. They don't own the land. Mm -hmm. So in situations where, so the public should also be educated in a manner for them to also understand that where you go to meet somebody who has also gotten land, there is the need for the two of you to look at what exactly happened. Did we buy from the same person or bought it from different persons? And sometimes, if you are at fault, if you did not do the investigation that my brother is saying, and you realize that, no, I am at fault because I did not uh, do the right investigation to ensure that I bought it from the rightful owner, there is no need going to litigate with the guy on the ground. Your, your action lies in you going after the person who has fraudulently or whatever, by pretenses or whatever, sold the land to you. But sometimes we go to court just because somebody else has sold the piece of land to you. You have no course of action. In land's department, yes. they, they, you never hear them also coming in. They're always, you know, on, on the quiet. Now for them, they sit and wait for people to bring documents. I know, but and then they time there's this dispute, they all bring, you know, they... First guy brings his document, the second guy brings his document. Everybody has documents to say that, you know, this land is ours. And somehow they've managed to have some contact with the land's department. Oh, of course. In cases where what we are saying is the case, then it means that a thorough investigation, if it is done, and it should land on the doorstep of the land's commission that for one reason or the other, some support from inside your office or your outfit collaborated or contributed to the thing. I, I think they, they have to take them on. Charles. It's, it's, it's essential that that well, is done. One thing that we also see all the time is they're constructing a road, especially the N1. Uh, people were compensated and they were moved off. The road was constructed, finished, and they've, they've moved back in. So I'm sure... Another three years down the line, I will call you here to say that they say they're not going to move out. They need another compensation. How does that thing work? And especially, I buy my plot of land and I see somebody there, he has a hat. Uh, I don't need the land, so I'm okay. You know, two, three years later, there's three hats, four hats. Him and his wife and his kids, you know, having fun on my land. I now win my lottery and I will need my land. Oh, no, you have to compensate that because we are not going. What, 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 what I mean... How does it work? I, I think um, in terms of that kind of situation, it's a moral issue. 
Why do I say it's moral? Because um, you have your piece of land. Persons enter upon the land, put their hearts there. You, you stand by on concern. Invariably, they think that they are playing a certain role of security, which is that once they are there, no other person can come and build. And therefore, anytime you are ready to build, what do you expect them to do? Where should they move their hearts to? Sometimes they make those requests, and as, as I said, it's moral. It's not legal because you can always um, take a legal course of action and have them removed. But most of those um, requests are made on moral grounds, which are that you've left your land to follow. Well, if, if we are not there... So in court, mm. will, will, will the judge say uh, they, should, they should leave the land? Or? No, obviously, if the land is not yours, it's like you, are, you, are, you, you have trespassed onto somebody's piece of land. I have my piece of land. You have no documentation. No, you see, see a piece of land. Charles, you say that, but in a, all the time, and especially, you know, with these, uh, the hawkers and, you know, market women, and they set up their market and everything, as soon as the AMA comes, it's like, no, we're going to go on a naked demonstration unless you give us another market or unless you do. And they demand and they win the case. No, these are, these are not, they don't win the cases in terms of um, the law. They win the cases in terms of politics. Okay. Because politically, them, Politicians have to look at it from that perspective, whether we are willing to sacrifice our political ambitions vis-a-vis -vis against the law. Because once you are a hawker, it means that in terms of even your own description, you are not properly before or on the particular land you are supposed to be. You are just like a trespasser. Mm -hmm. If you find a piece of land sitting somewhere, you put your kiosk or something on it, you are carrying out an activity on somebody's land. In law... Ordinary will call you, you are not a, even a licensee a because, uh, because you are a squatter. Because if you are a licensee, then Do squatters you are, have rights? They don't have no rights. Squatters don't have no rights. If you are a licensee, you have a right because you live on the land with the, the fiat of the landowner. And therefore, you, the landowner ought to give certain reasonable notices for you to move. But when you are a squatter, you are just like somebody who's found a piece of land. Would you think that this is land that I need to do my business on? You move on. But can you render somebody homeless? You, 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 why not? You can render somebody homeless because the issue is that because you don't run a charity as a landowner, neither are you a children's <laughs> home. Your, your duty is not to give people homes. <laughs> your duty is to make sure you protect your land. So uh -huh. sometimes you find people yeah. who get empty places and move in. And while they are there, they, they, they have a certain livelihood. The reason why they morally will, will, will request you to s compensate them is because having been on your land, it has prevented other people from entering land, which is that because of our system, that's why we're saying, because sometimes even a particular chief or a particular head of family, he becomes a new head of family. The old head of family has sold virtually all the lands. So what they end up doing is that they go and sell empty lands. You have, the land has been bought, paid for, and registered. But they will convince people that this land, when the man asked for it, he never was able to pay. So we prevented him from developing. Because you are in a hurry, you, you part with money. We'll come back. And this law of if you buy land, how long should it take before you develop it? Some say two years, some say ten years. Is it a state law? Is it an individual customary law? We'll come back. We're still talking land. Hello and welcome back. Uh, just before one on the break, we, I was asking, if I bought a piece of land and they said, look, after two years, if you don't develop it, then I'm taking my land back. Some say it's after five years. Some say, oh, if it lies fallow for 10 years, then that's it. It goes back to uh, the guy who sold it to you. Is it law or is it an individual thing? Charles, what is it? I mean, I buy your land after two years. I still haven't developed it. Well, that's it. You've lost it. I'm taking it from you. No, 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 basically, um, land acquisition can be put into several ways. We have what we call um, conveyances, which we are looking at our trial sale. That is to say that the fellow has the, what we call in law freehold, which means that he's selling outright. So if you also have a freehold, you may assign or convey to another person. We have leaseholds, have leases and all that. There are various ways of granting lands. But what it is is that the land document itself, whether it is a freehold, a leasehold, or whatever form of document you are doing with your grantor or, or the vendor, for that matter, 
it is an arrangement between the two parties. There's no express law that we have which says that. That will hold in court? It will because the, the <laughs> parties are contracting. It's a form of a contract. Okay. And therefore, unless it's unconscionable in most cases or it's illegal or it offends public policy, then the court will enforce it because those are the intentions of the parties at the time they entered into the transaction. You mentioned something at the break which I think was very exciting with regards to lease and that you know you collect the money on a monthly basis rather than collect yeah. that big yeah. word of cash and then. Okay. Because the problem that we have why people are fighting over land is because the chiefs or the family heads end up selling everything so that the youth or the next generation that comes up have nothing to sell. But if you should make lease arrangement, which is the technical uh, in, uh, name for leases and ground rent, means that because the person coming to buy the land mm, either do not have the capital sum or do not want to pay the capital sum, you give the land to him and then he pays rentals, just like renting a room. So if the capital sum for a piece of land is, say, 20,000 Ghana cities, Instead of taking the capital, so we sometimes, in a way, the chief and his people alone take it anyway. You rent that same piece of land, and then you charge something economic and say, though, take the land and give me 2,000 cities a year, which is even revised every fifth year or something. So that if the chief gives a 99-year lease, he lives on the land for 40 years. By the time he's not there and the next generation comes, they will still have land that have economic payments coming out of it. So in that case, you know, we will have a lot of situations where the youth will not rise up. These land guards that we see around, they are part of the area. These are youth who don't have land to sell and the limited land that is available they are fighting over. But assuming they have a regime, their predecessors had taken good management systems where they have actually leased the land and they are taking economic rent. They will have something to, 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 to fall on instead of... Uh, uh, having these vacant uh, pieces of land and fighting over it. Now, like Charles was saying, there is no specific law that says that you need to develop land within a certain time. But every landowner should also have management in mind. We should prevent speculators. It's speculators that bring all this war. So that if I tell you that this lease that I've given you for this land, you need to build within two, three years. It's for a reason. So that you don't speculate, come and buy four plots and later you sell. Those are the things that bring the problem. Mm -hmm. And we have to enforce it. So if for three years you don't build as speculated in a lease agreement, which is a contract, which four signed, then even taking legal action against you, I can get the land back because I have right of re-entry, that is if it is agreed on in the lease. Mm -hmm. you know. So we have to get into that regime where we are prudently managing our land holdings as a business. Should, you know. should the government you know, take chiefs through an orientation? Now, the reason why I say this, if you're driving up a brie, going to a pediasi, and then you look at Accra, and the speed at which Accra is coming to join sort of the uh, Abri mountains, and you look there, and it's just residential houses scattered. I don't see any fire service. I don't see any major hospitals, major banks, universities. It's just literally houses. And I'm sure if you stood there, took a photo in the morning and took it in the evening, there will be changes. I don't think there's any even proper road networks. It's just houses. Should we go through some sort of orientation to understand, you know, what impact or what effect we are causing to the nation? I think that, you see, we, we, it is because people, when people are left on their own, they will not do the proper thing. That is why we have given some people that mandate, that rule over us. So I think we need, somebody was saying the other day, uh, it was a joke, but I, I think I started it. He said we need a very honest dictator <laughs> to rule some of these things. <laughs> honest means that he's there dictating, but he's doing it in a very honest <laughs> manner. So there is nothing wrong for government intervening, the certain interventions in some of these things, and say that even though the land belongs to you, your use of it is such that it may have adverse effects on us. So that planning can come in to control what you are talking about. Because you have a whole wide area of land. You don't put in facilities for fire and all that. And then when there is fire outbreak or whatever, or you have one vast piece of land, 
nothing is done there in terms of servicing and drainage and the rest. You see, at the end of the day, government spends more because you would need to go out there and then do the dirty work of, sorry to say, someone who should have done the right thing. They still take the money and go. So I agree with you on that score that there can't be certain government intervention in terms of planning policies that can help arrest some of these things. So we need to get some eye on hand to get people to do the right thing. After all, that is why power is given to others to, to, to get others to do right. Charles, is the state very lax with uh, punishment for people who flout land laws? I, 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 basically, I, I do not say so because um, the, once you are culpable, the law will, will speak. And if for some reason the law finds that you build on a, on a, on a waterway, your property will be removed. So basically what it tells us is that our difficulty has always been that um, some other institutions of state have really been put in place to cater for a lot of these things. But because of our individual gains as practitioners vis-a-vis -vis the various government departments we belong to, we take things for granted. Charles, before you continue, yeah. you know, these, uh, you walk around and you see stop work. Mm. Now I'm convinced that's one, one person because it's the same handwriting <laughs> all over. The same, literally, the W, the stop work <laughs> is the same. And, and there's not one that I've seen that have actually stopped work. I mean, the thing is there and the work still goes on. No, the, the reason is that when you, your building is, has been written stop work, they have several reasons. Oh, okay. One could be that you are building without a permit. It could also be that you are building a structure in an area which is unapproved. What happens, as I said, and some individuals also intentionally write stop work on their buildings by themselves. The reason being that so that any other officer coming knows that an officer has been there. Of, of the building department has been there already. So what happens is that, and others also come and they are, that's what I said, it's the system. Mm -hmm. They are looking at their own personal gains rather than doing the work. So they come to an individual's place. Whatever transpires between them, they move on. The stop work is written and the people continue with their work and they never come. Then we end up saddling the courts with the Easterns. Mm -hmm. One man has put in an investment when you could have stopped him at the initial say you don't. Obviously he won't go to sleep. He will fight and fight and fight with the aim of making sure that his investments are not destroyed. I mean, that's digressing a little bit, but that means the AMA a bit slow on that section. Yeah, so it means that our assemblies ought to be up and doing, which means that, you see, because every assembly is reasonably expected to at least do some, um, they, they should have a general outlay of the town. Beyond that, individuals also own properties, and therefore, even if you have an individual layout as a landowner, it must fit into the planning system of the town and country planning department under the particular assembly or municipality. Let me, let me come to Kofi. Kofi, mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in South Odoko, and now there was a piece of land called Chaba, and it was really waterlogged. Mm -hmm. And we knew that any time there was flooding in that area, that's where it sort of went. Now... You know, you go there and the whole place is being filled up and people are building on it. And as a surveyor, are you supposed to tell me that, no, this piece of land that I'm surveying, it's not right for building or once I've paid for it and I've paid for your services, well, this is your 100 by 100, take it and let me go. You mean if somebody contracted you? If I you contracted you, say, look, I bought this piece of land, can you check it for me? Oh, okay. When you come, yes. are you supposed to advise me that, no, you know, Nana, this piece of land... It's flood prone, or this is designated for, you know, a waterway, or, or you just say, well, you paid me, so that's your measurement. Thank you very much. No, you need to give that advice, because once you go to the site as a professional, definitely you might see one or two things that does not conform. Sometimes even your basic knowledge in that area will tell you that oh, this is an open space, and it's waterlogged because it's been designed in such a way that all water from the highland comes here and flows out. So you need to give that basic advice. But the point to you is that, like Charles said, the district assemblies 
are the planning authorities in the respective areas that they have their jurisdiction. So if the Kala, the place that you mentioned, is a place that you don't have to build there, sometimes you don't even have to go and mark a building and say stop work. Go and break it. Just that there are other f- forces and factors that come the way. But we must just be seen to be doing things. Why do you allow somebody to build in a flood prone area? And then there is flood. And then you take our Miaga resources and you say not boom. And then you go out there and do So sometimes when you put two and two together, so sometimes what we do doesn't fit into the scheme of things. I'm so, saying that when you give people warning, I'm not saying we should be heartless. But sometimes when things happen, not that we should leave the people. But we should have to em- ensure that even if it is by force, we need to move them out. You know, so the surveyor can advise all right. But if the person who contracted him decides still to go ahead and do it anyway, there should be some compelling force to, to uh, get him not to do it. And that is the, the, the district assemblies and the planning authority that are supposed to do the right thing. But like I just said, for one reason or the other, they come and mark their wall, stop work. And then it is there, and you continue. Charles, quickly, five seconds, what's the way forward? As I said, the way forward is for all of us to first, government, I think the, the laws are there. There is a discipline that we need from all of us, right from governments, which is the, the people who have given the mandate to rule us, down through our various departments, as to we individuals who intend to own the lands. Because, as I said, because our system of winner takes all and all those things, people are willing to sacrifice various things for some gain. Mm -hmm. And the individual who is supposed to do his work also thinks that I'm working and somebody else on top is earning more. Why would I work? The best is that let me take what the man can give me. I write it and move on. Then at the end, when there's a disaster, we spend more money. In trying to sort out the disaster than would have spent in trying to prevent it. So I believe that it's a holistic thing we must do. Government has put in place. There are very, very, there are very good laws on all these things we are discussing. The laws are there. It's some good. are dusty. Mm-hmm. Some are being used. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's an individual discipline. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Viewers, my guest today was Charles Lawinga Pozwing. Uh, who's a legal practitioner. And then I had Kofi Yosinejie, Honorary Secretary uh, for Ghana Institution of Surveyors. And we're discussing the complex matter of land. My name is Nanan Sakwa. We're back here tomorrow to do it all over again. Have a good evening.